Let's start by looking at the configuration of the PC that's going to be transmitting the stream. The first thing to do is to establish the IP address, because this will be used as the URL. Have a look in the network properties and make a note of the IP address. In this instance, it's 192.168.128. Both the desktop capture and streaming are being handled by version 2 of the VLC media player. Select Stream from the Media menu, go to the Capture Device tab, and select Desktop as the capture mode. In addition, set the frame rate to the same frame rate that will be used in VidBlaster, in our case 25 frames a second. With the screen as the capture mode, now add the protocol that will be used for streaming, RTSP in this case, and remember to click Add to add it to the profile. Note the port number, which is 8554, activate transcoding, and choose a codec. In this case, we're using MPEG-2. Click on the Properties button. Note it's MPEG Transport Stream. Go to the Video Codec settings. We've got ours on 9 megabits per second, which is about DVD quality, slightly better in fact. We're setting the frame rate to 25 to match our VidBlaster setting and we're scaling down to match what we'll be using in the VidBlaster profile, in this case 640 by 360. Note the summary and click Stream. What you should see now in the bottom left of VLC is a counter. If you don't see the counter, you're not streaming. Finally, to give us some moving images on the desktop for the duration of this test, I'm setting up Google Earth, running a tour of my local area around Manchester. Now let's look at the PC which will be receiving the stream. The first thing I'm doing is using the VLC player to confirm that the stream is being received. I go to Open Network Stream, put in the URL, which is RTSP, the IP address of the transmitting machine, and the port number. We should then be able to see the stream being received. In this case, the Google Earth Tour. Going back to the transmitting machine for a moment and running the Windows Task Manager, you can see that the overall CPU usage isn't too high. This is running on an i7 machine, but even lesser machines should be capable of reasonable results. This is partly due to the use of MPEG-2 as the compression format, which offers quite a good compromise between quality and CPU resource usage. Of course, you don't have to confirm that the stream is working in the VLC player, you can go straight to VidBlaster. Once in VidBlaster, go to the video menu and make sure the settings match the settings that were used on the transmission side, in this case 640 by 360, and that the frame rate also matches, in this case 25. Then move down to the RTSP input module and set the URL. Now in this case we've done it before so you can see that the setting is the same as it was in VLC player with the port number 8554 and a slash on the end. That should start the stream being received. Click on the module and it'll appear on the program output. And that's it really. A remote desktop which could contain anything from PowerPoint graphics, photographs, captions streamed into VidBlaster over a LAN.